Hey, it's Alslaya Music back at it with another tutorial video. This one will be a step-by-step -step tutorial on making a marbled slab ceramic mug. So currently, my channel typically has two types of videos. I have my song covers, which I usually post on Fridays, which I'll do various songs on various instruments. And then I have my more recent edition of tutorials. I'm going to allow myself to be more broad with these tutorials, since I have a wide variety of interests beyond just music. So some may be song tutorials, others can be art, or maintenance on instruments, or whatever else I find interesting. Ceramics clay is something I've been getting into lately, and since I don't have a pottery wheel, I kind of wish I did. I have to do everything by slab work or hand built. So please join me in this video as I explore one of my more recent interests with making this mug. So now it's time to get some clay. I currently keep it on the floor because it's heavy and it's just easy to leave it there. Um, but I have two colors, this white clay and shed clay. I believe the brand is Amico. I'm gonna have a total of three colors in this marble. I'm gonna have white, red, and like a pinkish color because I'm gonna mix some of this together. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of that now. I just use one of these big carving tools. You could use one of the wires, but I just leave it in the bag, so I find it easier to use this. So I've got, I've got my white clay. Alright, so I've got my space all set up to start. So I'm on a nice sturdy table, and I have this canvas mat laid out that I'm going to be doing all the clay work on. And I'm going to go ahead and tape down the mat, because it moves around sometimes when I'm using a rolling pin, so I don't want it to move around. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so some of the tools I'm going to be using are a knife, a needle tool, clay wire, a rolling pin, um, this food scale so I can weigh out the clay that I'm using, a cup of water, and I also have this mug that I'm using for reference for the size that I want the mug that I'm making right now to be. And lastly, I have a ruler. So first I'm going to start by weighing out the clay to see if I have enough. So again, this mug I'm using for reference, and it is 502 grams. I'm weighing it on this baggie so the glass doesn't get dirty, and I'm just zeroing out that weight. So currently of the white clay, I have 314 grams. The red clay I have 220, so that, are, that right there is already enough. And this mixed clay I have already 114. Now I'm going to go ahead and wedge the clay to get it all mixed and ready and make sure there's not any air bubbles in it. So to wedge it, I usually put it on my surface and then push it down and out with the heels of my hand. And then I'll just move it to the next side and do the same process. If you ever run into the problem that the clay is a little too dry, then you can just add some water like this. Just dip my fingers in the water, spread a little bit on there, and then just fold it in and continue wedging. And if it's ever too wet, you can just keep wedging it, because as you can see, some of the moisture comes off onto the canvas. So you can just keep wedging it for a while. And it'll either mix in the moisture that you added, or it'll get some of it out if you have too much. Next, I'm going to take some relatively even sized chunks of each of the different colors and set them on that. So they don't actually have to be even if you don't want them to. Having some bigger and smaller pieces can make for some more interesting marbling. So I've got all my pieces laid out. I have five white three red and three of the mixed color. So I'm gonna press them flat, which I've already begun to do a little bit. And then I'm going to lay them in a stack, alternating the colors. So I'm gonna start with one of the mixed pieces and then put down a white piece. And when you put them together, you wanna make sure to kind of roll them, like put it up together on one side and then press it together like this as you go. So you don't want any air to get trapped between the layers. 
And if there's air in any of the pieces when you fire it, they could explode. It hasn't personally happened to me, but it's happened to some of my friends, so just be forewarned about that. So I have a mixed piece and a white piece, and then I'm gonna put a red piece down ne next. So when some of my pieces are bigger than the other ones, like see how this white piece is smaller than this one on top? Sometimes I'll just go ahead and overlap over the edges, and that'll give it some more interesting marbling when you start mixing it. Now I'll put another white piece, The next piece, this one's pretty big, white, red, white, white, and finally I'm ending with this red piece. This is the sack, and then it alternates colors. And now I'm going to shape this into a bit of a like brick kind of. My camera just literally fell off the table, so I had to change camera angles, but should be good enough. Back to making it into a brick. If you want, you can wedge it a bit here, but I prefer my marbling to stay more of uh, lined. But just for sake of example, I'm going to wedge it a little bit. So you want to mix it enough that there's some designs, not so much that it just all muddles together. So. I would just do it four times, and then I'm going to shape it back into a brick again. So I've got it back to this brick shape again, and now I'm going to set it down and choose a side, and I'm going to take the clay wire and go ahead and cut it all the way through. So this is what my marbling looks like right now. So I could choose to continue from here, but I think this looks pretty cool. Actually, I'm going to slice it one more time and see what it looks like. Here is where another cut looks. Better see. So I like the way this marbling looks, so I'm going to go ahead and just... I'm going to cut this one again. Okay. And then I'm going to choose the sides of the marbling from each piece that I like best. One other tool that I'm using that I forgot to mention earlier, um, this is just like a scoring tool. It also has like this flat side. So I'm going to score the sides of each of these pieces, the ones that I'll be attaching together. Like that. And then just add some water to them and stick them together. So this is the side that won't be showing, so I'm just going to go ahead and cover the seam so it stays together nicely. So I'm pressing the seam together by adding some water and also using this knife to kind of overlap the clay some and help it stick together. I'll attach this other piece. Now I've got all my marbled pieces attached together. And this is where the rolling pin comes on. I need it to be at least this wide. So I need to roll it this way a bit. And then long enough that it's the diameter of the circle. So the diameter of the circle is like 10 inches. So this needs to be 10 inches long. And then the width is where I need to add. I'm gonna roll it out quite a bit. Okay, so this length is good now. Now I need to flip it over. And now I need to roll it this way. And you also wanna just flip it over periodically so it doesn't stick. It's almost wide enough. I just checked it with my mug. So the width looks good now, and now I'm just going to roll out whatever's left on the length so I have enough space to cut this bottom piece out. So it needs to be about 10 inches long. Yeah, that's enough space. Okay, I'm going to take this ruler and use it to get both the length and to have a nice straight edge. And then I'll use the knife to cut along the edge. There, cut against the ruler to get it straight. Okay, so this will be this big piece here will be the walls of the mug. Let's go ahead and gather all those scraps. Got this piece now. This is what the finished marbling looks like. Quite happy with it. When I go to attach the mug, I roll the ends a little bit thinner 
since they'll be overlapping and I don't want quite as much bulk at the seam compared to the rest of the walls of the mug. Take my scoring tool and score it on this side here and then flip it over and score in the same place but the opposite side. This will be the two sides that meet and then go ahead and take some water on my fingers and apply it right here to the score section because this will be the seam. Now they're like this right now and then I just want to press it together along the inside and the outside to overlap. I'm just going to take some water again, just kind of press down where the ends of each piece meet on the inside and the outside and just blend them together to kind of hide the seam and keep it stronger. Once you've got this piece together, you want to take the back of the scoring tool and then go over the seam or any place that's wet or has imperfections and scrape off the thin layer of slit that's on the surface. It's just like watery clay and it'll bring back the marble design. So right now when my mug is just sitting straight, it's a little bit crooked. So I need to cut some off the bottom and the top as well. It's not straight either. So I'm just going to do that by setting it down and then taking this tool and laying it down on the lowest point and then just bringing it around the top rim and it'll cut off the clay as it goes around. And then just go ahead and do the same to the other side. And now I'll take this piece and set it on here, which is the scraps left over from when I cut it off from the rolled piece. And I will cut out the bottom by just tracing around. I like to trace around it with the needle tool. I found I find that the easiest to use. And then I go ahead and take this again and just make a little rim around the edge that I score, like right where I love attached to the base, like that. And then flip this over and score here as well. And then add some water. Put the two pieces together. And then this particular area is very important to close the seam. Because if you don't, you'll have like liquid or coffee or whatever come through. And you do not want that out of the mug. I go ahead and blend it from the bottom over the sides or the seam and then to give it some stability i'll usually sit it right side up my hand on the inside and then either use my finger or the back of the knife to bring up the bottom over the seam and then also just to have my finger wet and go around on the inside of the seam to close it off there as well. Okay, and then for the top rim, I like to get it a little wet and then very gently roll it a little bit outward so it kind of flares at the top. You might need to add some water if it's beginning to crack or get dry. So then you just have that little curved lip that you put your mouth against when you drink out of it. If you want, you can stop here and just have a cup. But I'm gonna go ahead and add a handle because I want it to be a mug. So now I'm taking all these scrap pieces that I have from cutting it out earlier and sticking them all together. I'm gonna get pretty wet front with the extra water and then roll it out like this. A combination of like pulling it and gluing it together to just thin it out until I get the thickness that I want it to be. I don't need all of this bulk on the end, so I'm just gonna cut that off. So this is about the thickness that I want the handle to be. And I'm taking this existing mug. I'm just gonna check how long it needs to be, so we're about this long. Now on the ends, I'm going to kind of press it and flare it out a little bit, because this is where I'm going to attach it to the mug body. And I'll do the same double sides. So there's my handle, and I'm going to take 
my mug. I want to attach it where the seam is, just to further help hide it. It's right here. So I'm gonna grab it and measure out where approximately I want it. And then take the needle tool, and just very gently trace out the shape of it, for the top and the bottom piece. And then take this scoring tool and rough up that area that I traced out. And the side of the handle ends looks like this. And lastly, I'll just take some more water. So I'm going to attach this to the mug and then just blend it out to the body. So here is the final mug with the handle attached. We've got a little lip on top and marble design. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of these more art style videos because I've done a few of them. Um, yeah, so I hope you found this helpful. If you are trying to make a mug or anything else you've done, I hope it was entertaining. And please like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any video ideas or requests, feel free to leave them below in the comments.